Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, A.J. Hogue, where A.J.'s more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's A.J. with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. Hi, I'm A.J. Hogue, the author of Effortless English, Learn to Speak English Like a Native. I train you, I teach you to speak English fluently, speak English powerfully, speak English confidently, think in English. When you train with my VIP program, you commit to my VIP program, you join my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Commit and don't quit. Commit at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Book Club Today. Chapter 5 of Brave New World. Now, Chapter 5 is focused on drugs. Drugs. The use of drugs for mind control. How specifically recreational drugs. Recreational drugs. As you'll see this phrase in the news sometimes or online. Uh, recreation means fun, for fun. So drugs for fun. Drugs to escape. So... um. In our world right now, that means things like marijuana, alcohol, cocaine, heroin, all those kind of uh, drugs are recreational drugs. People do them to, to feel good, right? They're not drugs for a medical problem. They're drugs for feeling good. And that's really what Chapter 5 is about, how these drugs are used to control us. We are live on Facebook for our book club. Usually the book club's on Facebook. And, uh, of course, we have our very good audience, regular audience on Facebook, such as Merrick and Cardo and Ibrahim Ali and Vladislav and Ronan and Lisa and Din, Elena, Fernanda, Asma, Carol. Good to see you, Carol. Let's begin, shall we? Let's just jump right in. Let's just jump in with our book club, and uh, then I'll come back, as usual, for the comments and questions. Pretty simple chapter. That This one's simple. Um, it's basically, it's in two parts again. We saw this with um, the last chapter, so there's part one and part two. Part one is about Lenina, the woman, and her date with uh, Henry. And part two is about Bernard. One of our, the, really the main character, Bernard. And they both do basically the same thing. Cause, so they both do a kind of a drug uh, ceremony. Now remember, in this world, they have what they call the perfect drug. The perfect drug in Brave New World. It's called Soma. Soma. What is the perfect drug? The perfect drug. It's like, uh, I mean, if I had to use a modern drugs, I would say it's a combination of like ecstasy, and I don't know, maybe LSD, like a combination. So ecstasy so that they feel really warm and happy. And LSD because they kind of uh, imagine visual things, like visually everything looks beautiful and interesting. So it's kind of a combination of these two, but with no side effects, no, no negative side effects. They have designed this drug Soma, so there are no side effects. So like, for example, you know, we have uh, alcohol. The most popular drug is uh, alcohol in our world now. And uh, alcohol, you know, alcohol makes people feel more relaxed. It relaxes people physically and mentally. Um, now, people react differently to alcohol. Some people get kind of angry and be, they're bad drunks, we say. Um, but basically, people feel more free and relaxed right? When they're drinking, most people. Some get kind of happy and we call them happy drunks and others are, we might you call like angry drunks or whatever, right? But so there, but there are side effects to drinking. This is the thing. Dr drinking alcohol, it's not all just positive. There are negative side effects, right? Physical side effects, you feel terrible the next day. Some people feel terrible the same day, even while they're drinking. So it messes up your digestion. It's not good for you. Um, you know, so there's the hangover. And as I said, there are also side effects is that uh, many people who drink uh, and drink a lot 
they actually don't get happier. They get more angry and they do stupid things and they get in fights. All this kind of stuff happens. So there are negative side effects to drinking. And this is true for all, you know, all these other drugs that we have now. You know, marijuana, you feel pretty relaxed. Marijuana is not too terrible. But, um, you know, it, does, it makes you lazy. It has a side effect. It makes you lazy. It makes you want to eat a lot of junky food and sugary food. People who smoke a lot of marijuana often get fat and lazy. Again, negative side effects. So the idea in Brave New World with Soma, the idea of Soma, they have engineered, they have created the perfect drug in their mind, right? And from their side, their thinking is they have the perfect drug. So it just makes people feel happy and fun and imagining amazing stuff, but none of the side effects. There's no hangover afterwards. No hangover after. No, uh, they don't feel angry and upset. It like just makes them, everybody just feel perfectly wonderful and happy all the time. Forget all their problems. Everything's wonderful. This is Soma. And Soma is very important for Brave New World. It's a very important part of the society. Super important. Why? Because they said in the last chapter that, you know, even with Brave New World, even with all the mind control, they have all this mind control all this programming from before birth. But still, still people get upset. Still people get depressed. And of course we know why, right? Because this is an empty life they have. It's an empty, evil life they're living. They don't realize it, but it is. But that's why the people will start to feel sad, upset, and they're just, they don't feel happy. So, the world controllers need a solution. What do they do? Because, you know, when people get unhappy, then they might start to fight. Then they might start to think, what's wrong? Why am I unhappy? Then they might start to notice all the bad things and maybe eventually fight back. So it's not good. The world controllers don't want people to become angry, upset, depressed, because those emotions might eventually lead them, some of them, to wake up. But if everybody's always happy uh, and relaxed all the time, then they're totally under control. They'll never fight back. So they, the world controllers need this drug. They need this drug. It's a very important part of their society because in Brave New World, anytime, anytime someone starts to feel bad, have a problem in their life, be depressed, be angry, any strong feeling like that, any waking up, what do they do? Well, they, they program them, immediately take this drug, Soma. Take this drug, Soma, forget all the problems, they all disappear, and ah, oh, I just feel wonderful. It's like heroin, but without the bad effects. And in this way, the people never wake up because they start to wake up, but they take the drug and then they just forget it all. Ah, oh, it's okay. I feel good. And so they have, in the society, they've made the soma, the drug. It's like a ritual. It's important that everybody take this drug often. So they have these um, different ways to encourage people to take the drug. Now, the first way is like with, um, is kind of like a party, like a dance party. Like, just like we have now, right? What do people do now? This, this first part with Lenina is really no different at all. Not different at all than the, like, nightclub, the nightclub culture we have already in most big cities. I mean, what do people do in nightclubs? I'll tell you, in San Francisco, they take drugs or drink a lot, and then they go listen to music and they dance and go crazy. For the same purpose. Forget all their problems. Yeah, party, right? So that's what happens. So this first section, part one, is Lenina and Henry. They go to a nightclub, basically. It's a nightclub. It's a place where they have music. And it's called, of course, it's, you know, this is sci-fi, so it's called the scent, which means smell, and color organ, synthetic music. So maybe it's like techno or something, right? Well, kind of like now we have techno, synthetic music. But they also have like nice smells because, again, it's kind of like this drug is like a little bit like LSD. So it makes their visual, their eyesight, they see all the colors look amazing. Their smells are great. 
the sounds are wonderful, and then they're feeling their bodies feel wonderful when they take the drug. So they go to these uh, clubs and they have music, but also they have, you know, light shows like at concerts now. And uh, also like good smells and then they all da- and then they dance. So Lenina and Henry, they take this drug Soma and they take a few doses and they listen to this great this music and they basically they just party and they forget everything and just feel good. They just focus on what sensory pleasure. That's what this drug does. Right. Sensory means, excuse me, the senses. So that means eyesight, sound, physical feelings in your body. Sensory pleasure. Again, this drug increases pleasure. That's the whole uh, point of the drug, to, in- to create this huge amount of sensory pleasure, not deeper, not spiritual pleasure, not, not nothing deeper long term, just immediate. Your body feels really good. So they basically just stay out all night dancing, taking this drug, and they go back. And then they have sex with each other with while taking the drug. So again, pleasure, 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 sensory pleasure. It's addicting and it makes them forget everything. So they, they never fight back if they always feel wonderful. I mean, think about it. Like think of this in our world now. Heroin addicts. Think of a heroin addict. Okay. Heroin, right? It's, it's super pleasurable. It makes them feel wonderful. So do, do heroin addicts, do they start revolutions? Do heroin addicts, you know, fight back or do political protests? They don't do anything. All they care about is heroin. They just keep trying to get more money to get more heroin so they can lay around and feel the pleasure of heroin. That's all they do. Their whole life is focused on it, and they do nothing else. They're totally under control. They're slaves. They're slaves to the drug. So that's what Soma does, too. Now, part two, we have Bernard. Now, Bernard also, it's another soma, another drug ritual, but this one's different. This one is more like uh, uh, trying to replace religion. So the first one is partying, like party culture. That's Lenina and Henry. And we have this now with nightclubs. The second one is uh, Bernard goes, it's called a solidarity circle. But basically it's this whole ritual, this whole organized thing where there are 12 people six men and six women, they're in a circle, they take the drug, and then the leader of the group, they kind of like sing this song and they chant, and it's like religion, like they're saying, ah, we will become one, forget yourself, we will all come together and be one. Let me read, I have, it says, here's the quote, this is what they're saying as they get, so they're taking the drug and they all start saying together at the same time, we are 12, make us one like drops within the social river. All right, what does this mean? What's the purpose of this one? So the first one is just pleasure. This one's a little different. They're using the drug again, but this time with the drug, what they're doing is they're trying to destroy individuality. We've already seen this, that Brave New World, they, they must destroy all differences between people. Everybody must be equal and the same. Just like in our world now, all these uh, social justice warriors, equality, equality, they want everybody exactly the same. They want to destroy all individual differences, completely destroy them. And so they use this drug to do it, this drug, and then they, they do the drums and they, they chant, you know, we are 12, we make us one. So they're, they're trying to destroy any feeling of being individual, right? Remember yesterday I talked about independence and interdependence, and they're both necessary. Well, they're trying to destroy independence completely. In Brave New World, they must destroy that because independent people are strong. Independent people uh, think differently. Independent people are hard to control. They're self-reliant. They're very tough to control. So they must destroy all independence. And so they use this drug also to do that. Now, the interesting thing we find is that Bernard, it doesn't work on him. So again, we're seeing Bernard is our slowly red-pilled person. He's slowly waking up. And... uh, 
So he he's disappointed. He's unhappy because see everybody else, the other 11 people, the other 11 people, they all feel it and they all forget themselves. They they forget their individuals. They destroy their independence completely using the drug and ah, and they feel so great. But Bernard does not. He pretends. He just he says, "Yes, this is wonderful. Oh, yes. I forget myself." But not really. He actually does not. Even with the drug, Bernard's still awake. Bernard just doesn't feel it like the others. He still feels separate. He still feels individual. Now, of course, he feels unhappy about this because he realizes, I'm different. I'm not like everybody else. You know, remember in the beginning of the red pill, people can be sad and depressed or they can be angry, right? The beginning parts of waking up are not good, just just as we'll see with Neo in the Matrix. When he first gets the red pill and wakes up, it's horrible. Well, same with Bernard. It makes him feel depressed, makes him feel lonely. He's different than everybody else. Everybody else seems so happy and enjoying the drugs, but he can't enjoy the drugs. He's not happy. And he's like, what's wrong with me? I don't know. Why am I so different? So, He's not awake completely yet. He has not woken up yet to the red pill. He does not really see what's wrong with Brave New World yet. Right now, he just feels something's wrong. Right now, he just feels different. Right now, he just feels he's an individual. But he, he's, he's, he doesn't realize it's the whole society that's crazy. Right now, he thinks that he's crazy. Right? He's blaming himself right now, which is very common. You think, what's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? But he doesn't realize... He's the normal one, and everybody else is crazy. And so the, the chapter ends with Bernard feeling unhappy because he can't enjoy this drug ritual. All right, and so that's it. That's it. So it's very much focused on the use of drugs. Now, again, let's just quickly talk about the meaning behind this. What is Huxley saying? And remember, Huxley wrote this a long time ago. So once again, he wrote it, you know, 80 plus years ago. Drugs were not so big then. Now, again, we have this. We don't have the one perfect Soma drug, but we have heroin and ecstasy and LSD and marijuana and all these drugs. And of course, the legal ones too, just alcohol that are pushed, pushed, pushed. And it's with the same purpose. It's the same purpose. We want people to be distracted. It's another distraction. It's another pleasure addiction, just like food and sex and these other things. It's another one. It's another way to make people forget. If someone, if people focus on doing drugs, then they won't solve their problems, right? If you're unhappy, if you're unhappy, you know, there's kind of two things you can do. You can really feel it, really feel it, be unhappy. And that pain the pain of the unhappiness is very motivating. It's energizing, right? It will make you search for a solution. You're like, I'm, I'm really unhappy. I'm really unhappy. I've got to do something. What do I need to do? How can I become happier? And you look at your life and you maybe make changes in your life. Maybe you say, oh, I'm, I'm unhealthy. I've got to change my eating. I've got to start fasting. I've got to exercise. Or maybe you look at your social life and you think, oh my God, I have no friends. I have to go out. I have to meet people. Or maybe you're a, a slave at your job and you hate it and you think, ah, I've got to do something. What can I do? Maybe find a new job. Maybe uh, do something else. Maybe start a business. Maybe live more simply. So it's motivating. The pain of unhappiness is motivating when things are bad in your life. If you really focus on the unhappiness, it can lead you to find solutions and make changes and therefore have better long-term happiness and deeper long-term happiness. But another solution, not really solution, but another strategy a lot of people do is when they're unhappy, they don't focus on the unhappiness. They just, they don't like the feeling and they want to hide the feeling, right? The feeling is just a symptom, but they just want to get rid of that feeling, get rid of the symptom. And what's the fastest way to do that? Well, pleasure, drugs are a good way. You just drink and you forget it. So you're unhappy at your job instead of really being honest, really feeling the unhappiness and then making some difficult choices and changing your job, quitting your job, doing other things. Those are difficult sometimes. 
Instead, what some people do, they just get drunk. After work, they go to a bar and they drink and they drink to forget about their unhappy life, to forget about their unhappy job. And they do it again and again and again. And then what happens? They never change. They never let themselves feel the unhappiness completely. They hide it with the alcohol or the marijuana or whatever, or the sex or the food. They hide it with those shallow pleasures just to avoid the bad feeling. But that's the problem. When you avoid bad feelings, then you never really change the root. You don't find the root of the problem. You know, the root of the problem is something in your life. Maybe you have a bad job, maybe bad relationships, maybe you're unhealthy, whatever. But if you just try to hide the bad feeling, you don't find the root. So you need to feel those bad feelings have a purpose, a message for you. So it's actually good to feel them. It's actually good to feel the depression. Let yourself be angry and examine your life. Why am I so depressed? Why am I so bored? Why am I unhappy? Why am I angry? What's the root? And find the root and change it. That makes you more powerful. It makes you strong and independent. Gives you more freedom in your life. And long term, not right now, but long term over years, months and years, you will have much, much stronger happiness, purpose, meaning in your life. So, that's the solution, the best solution, not the drugs. But in Brave New World and in our world, they want you to take the drugs because they make you easy to control. The drugs make you easy to control. All right, let's, uh, let's go to our comments and questions. I think that's it. It's a pretty simple chapter, really. It's really one topic uh, in this chapter. Like Abdur Armane says... We are really living in Brave New World. Oh, for sure we are. It's happened. Huxley wrote this 80 years ago. Most of it is reality now. Most of it's real. Okay, no flying cars. <laughs> a couple things are a little different. But the general ideas, the main ideas of the book are already real in our world now. Adramani says uh, we should do our best to get rid of the blue pills we have. Yes, indeed, we do. That's why we're doing this book club. Well, like Ibrahim Ali says, uh, I, I've read about drugs, smoking, alcohol, didn't find any benefit of these harmful chemicals. Why do people take these terrible things? Our bodies don't need it. They destroy our health and lives. Who created these things? Well, indeed. Indeed. Especially the, uh, the more modern ones, the, uh, you know, that are really designed for just physical pleasure. Now, there are some arguments that certain uh, psychedelic, like mushrooms and things may have you know spiritual or creative qualities i'm not going to worry about that right now because that's not what the world controllers are focused on what they are focused on and what soma is is a drug of pleasure it's a drug of pleasure increasing intensifying making stronger pleasures that's the way of true control that's why they do it. That's why they do it. And that's why people take it. Because the pleasure makes them forget the pain or the boredom. That's why they do it. Yeah, like Ozma says, they give them drugs to make them more weak. Never let them any chance to think. That's an important point right there. No chance to think. They said, you know, in the last chapter, the... Uh, uh, one of the world controllers, one of the directors said exactly that, that thinking was dangerous. So this is a very important point. They want everybody constantly busy with pleasure so that they never, ever think about anything. They never question Brave New World. They never question any of this. No time to think. Right. And again, we have this in our world now. Why all the apps, all the social media, all the regular media like TV shows, movies. I mean, how many people now in, in our world, how many people do you know that are 
constantly distracted that never really think about anything deeply. They never ask questions about their own life. They never ask questions about anything. They never just sit for a few hours a day just thinking. Every moment, every free moment, they're working or studying. And other moments when they're free, they're just looking at their phone, watching a video, watching a TV show, constant distraction, never, ever, ever thinking about anything. That's a lot of people now. A lot of people. Islam Kandil says, we all, can, we all should control ourselves against desires, but when someone else tries to control us, we scream. Can you explain? Is that logical? Yeah, well, it makes, it's psychological, right? Someone else controls you. It feels like pain. There's, it's a painful experience. So we kind of, many of us will try to fight back against that or we'll get angry about that. But the, the evil genius of Brave New World, the satanic genius of Brave New World and what our current world controllers realized is that if they use pleasure instead, then people don't fight back. People don't fight back because they feel good. Ah, oh, Christy says, my daughter, who's 17, gets so excited following our book club, Brave New World. She's also waiting, looking forward to our movie club. That's tomorrow on Twitch. going to be fun. So grateful because it will teach her a lot of things. Thanks, AJ, for doing this for us. You're welcome. Oh, speaking of movie club, uh, I realized something. You know, I've talked about doing like some kind of membership. You can join and get the movie club lessons. Uh, that will take some time. I have to do like kind of a new website for it. But um. But I also realized, well, VIP members, you're going to get it. For, you'll get those automatically. So any VIP members, you will get the movie uh, club lessons automatically. We'll just add that uh, to the courses site, and VIP members will get that also. It'll be kind of free bonuses for all VIP members. So definitely, VIP members, you will get that. Don't worry about it. You'll get the recordings. I'll, we'll need a little time. Probably I need a couple months, uh, six weeks, five weeks. Do we get just get it into our system? But don't worry. The recordings of the Matrix lessons, uh, all VIP members, you will get that for free or as part of your membership, I should say. Nasser says, is it possible to get rid of evil completely? How to tackle the problem gets before it gets bigger? Probably not. It's human nature, right? There, there's, there's, there's certain... Uh, maybe not every human, but you know, all of us have certain s kind of a selfishness. I think it's part of being in this material world. There's certain things that can lead many people to evil. And so, uh, no, the idea that can we get rid of it? No, we just have to try to reduce it and fight it as best we can. I mean, we can have less evil, I think. Yeah, like Michelle says, uh, in Brave New World, they create a beneficial drug. It erases doubt and fear, resulting in a happy recklessness. Yeah, kind of a happy mindlessness. This is the point. They're mindless, these people. They don't think about anything. They don't question anything. They're programmed. They're, they're, they're like biological machines, you know, like, like in many ways, almost like an animal. They're just, just pleasure and nothing else. It lowers the intellectual faculties in order to maintain the caste and its status. It's also true in our world to fight against free thought. Exactly. Exactly. Leandro says, do you think the industries of sports and entertainment are part of this control? Absolutely. 100%. Definitely. Yes. That's right. The Romans knew this. The ancient Romans, they called it bread and circuses. Bread and circuses. What does circus mean? It's not what we have now with animals. The Roman circus were races, like the, uh, the, the chariot races, the horse races, and like the gladiator fights. And the Romans realized, well, we can create these kind of, you know, bloody, exciting entertainment for the people, and then they won't wake up. 
We can control them more easily. Give them free bread, welfare, what we now call welfare, <laughs> and give them the, you know, this exciting entertainment, and that will keep the masses controlled. So the Roman emperors knew this too. We just have the high-tech version now. The high-tech version is, you know, professional sports and media, including social media. So the, the principles are there for a long time. That what's, what's dangerous now, as we see with Brave New World, is the technology gives them so much more power. It's so much worse now because of the technological power they have. All right, Amini says, do you have any uh, interesting topic? Do you have any solution to not end up with drugs and other stuff? Give us temporary pleasure, but longer term suffering and misery. Well, Dharma, natural law, these, you know, again, you know, our ancestors and already knew the answer to all of this. Self-discipline, virtue, you know, those traditional virtues, you find them in every society all through human history. It's the opposite of all this. It's controlling. It's actually controlling those pleasures, having the self-discipline. Again, this is why I love fasting. Fasting breaks so many of these pleasure addictions. And you start to realize that because you're fasting, you realize that, uh, oh, these are just addictions. I don't need this stuff. I don't need to eat every day. I don't need any of these other physical pleasures. And as you gain that self-discipline, as you gain the self-discipline and these virtues, you know, being honest, being um, courageous, self-disciplined, um, generous, all these traditional values that you find in all the, uh, you know, traditional cultures of the world. As you do this, you gain this mastery of yourself, right? And this gives you a different kind of, I won't say pleasure, but happiness, a much deeper, stronger long-term feeling of confidence and strength and faith and happiness that is much much better than the short quick pleasure of party drugs sex food see people think that oh well if i modern people now because they're so brainwashed they sometimes think well i want to enjoy life i can't do without this stuff then life will be no fun but they don't because they they're they're foolish they don't understand they don't understand that the the deeper happiness of virtue and dharma and natural law and these that those ways of you know living a self-disciplined good life, that the happiness is so much more powerful and deep. I'm speaking from experience, guys. I mean, I've experienced this myself directly. And uh, you can too, and many of you, many of you already do. So you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, of course, Slavika, I'm not surprised. Already there's a drug named Soma. It's a muscle relaxant. It has become frequently a frequently abused drug. So of course, some drug company use the name soma it relaxes your muscles right <laughs> and it's abused why am i not surprised yeah like andy vlaminik vlaminik says problem with drugs is not so much the effects but the addiction i used to smoke weed which is marijuana for eight years every day it eventually ruined my life i made a fast for 10 months Sometimes I smoke a little, but that does not affect my life anymore. Addiction kills your life gradually. Yes, good point. I mean, the same in alcohol, right? Have a glass of wine with your meal sometimes. It's no big deal. Um, it's the using it to forget everything, right? Same with marijuana. I would say marijuana is even safer than alcohol. So yeah, you smoke it you know, once or twice every now and then, it's no big deal. But it's like you said, it's the it's the using it to escape. It's the using it to escape and, and the constantly using it and then becoming addicted to the pleasure or the escape. It is, that's what does it, right? And, uh, you know, marijuana is not going to kill you, but it makes people lazy and fat. That's my uh, 
I had a roommate, my experience, uh, I had a roommate who was, uh, just smoked marijuana all the time. And, uh, he was a nice guy, and marijuana is much. It's not so bad. It's it's like I said. I think the effects are even a marijuana addict. It's not as bad as alcohol, but still, what it what it made him was fat and lazy. He he gained weight. He was constantly eating junk food all the time. He lost his motivation and his energy. I think for men, it it increases estrogen, which is a female hormone. So it kind of you lose some muscle and you get more fat and it just makes you soft and weak and lazy if you do it too much. No, one time, no. But um, that's I saw that happen to my roommate. I was like, oh, this is sad. What, what, you know, stop smoking, dude. You're smoking too much. Merrick with an excellent comment. Destroy individual thinking. This is the basis of communism. Yes, Brave New World is describing a kind of communism. Now, Orwell, Orwell, uh, in Animal Farm especially, he described kind of what you might call traditional communism, old school communism, you know, Lenin, Marx, Engels, communism stalin right that old soviet german style of communism but what we have now with brave new world and why i think brave new world for most of us is actually a uh describes our our world better now what brave new world is a kind of corporate right corporate meaning large super huge companies a corporate high tech version of communism you might call it new communism, right? Cultural Marxism is the is is a, is what you'll see it called now, mostly like in newspapers, or online. It's cultural, cultural Marxism, not so much economic, but cultural Marxism, and that is what Brave New World is describing: the cultural Marxism of Google and YouTube and the big media companies working together with the big banks, working together with governments. It it is another kind. So yes, destroy individual thinking is the basis of communism. The goal is to create a society deprived of oppression and class exploitation. People awakened from the system should be should more appreciate the possibility of living in a dis, a different system. I think that's how it is in Poland. We got to know the evil of communism. Oh yes, you did. And we know what is the awakening of society. The question is, is this awakening already finished? Have we not moved from one deceptive system to another? Exactly, Merrick. I think what Poland is experiencing and uh, much of Eastern Europe, the old Soviet countries, is that you were old-style communism, you know, Lenin, Marx, Stalin type. And now <laughs> you're getting the Western cultural communism of Brave New World. Uh, so, right, you still need to wake up. That's the kind of a trick they play, right? This is the trick they try to give us. It's another trick of mind control where they give you two choices and they say, you have to choose this one or choose this one. And they so they limit your choice. So people think, well, communism's bad, so maybe the Western system is better. But that's just a different kind of communism. It's cultural communism. It's Brave New World. They want you to choose Animal Farm or Brave New World. And they don't want you to realize they're both bad and we can do something else instead. And this is a trick. This two choices trick is used for many, many things. Always be careful about that. Yeah, like Marcin says... Can't add this one to the stream for some reason. Uh, on social media, I see a lot of people kissing photos of themselves or taking photos of themselves, kissing bottles of alcohol. They call themselves alcoholics, and for some reason, they think it makes them cool. Social engineering. Absolutely. In America, you'll see this, especially at a young age, at the college age. It's it, They do it through movies. They do it through TV and other other ways, but those are the two big ones, that it's cool to be drunk. You're not cool if you don't drink and act crazy and stupid, right? Who are the cool kids? The cool kids get drunk and do drugs. The 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 ones who are self-disciplined and hard workers and they live of, and they're virtuous. Oh, they're not cool. 
you know, this is the programming. Disney programs this, all the movies, lots of movies about uh, that are aimed at teenagers, TV shows, on and on and on. It is absolutely social programming. Yeah, like Fernando says in Japan, I see people in Japan working in horrible jobs. They never have a chance. Uh, they are blue pilled. Yes, and this is in uh, now the Japanese. Good thing about the Japanese that the they quite strict about the drugs um, here, which is good. But people here are distracted by working. They just work, 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 work. They're so busy working, and of course the cell phones and the media that they also don't have time to think about their lives. They're afraid to make changes. So it's just, you know, some countries use different methods, like in America and I'd say Western Europe. You know, alcohol and drugs are a big part of it. In uh, other places, maybe more in Asia, of course, there's still alcohol and drugs, but uh, less. Japan, it's more about like work and being like a work slave and the education system. These are more their favorite techniques. Like every government and uh, big company has their favorite techniques, right? And some focus on some things and others focus on other things. I mean, he says, do you think social media is addictive too? Absolutely. It's designed to be addictive. One of the uh, original Facebook executives quit and he said that they do a lot of research to make it addictive. They're trying to make it addictive. Kong Kong says, I just joined the volunteer for a lot of students from all over Asia. I feel very lonely because uh, I get noted from the others. I'm different than the others. They asked me to go to a pub, but it doesn't work for me. Yeah, I'm the same because I don't drink. So uh, my brain is still thinking. I realize I need to start helping people more, share more information. That's the best way to get happiness. I've decided my purpose and I'm going to work on it. Very nice. See, great. This is the solution I get after some days in depression. See, you know, when you really th focus on those bad feelings and try to figure them out, try to understand them, then you start to find solutions. And, you know, I'm a non-drinker. I know what you mean. Like when I was younger, I would go to bars with my friends. I, I didn't drink, really. I've been drunk maybe three times in my life. Um, but I would go and try to talk to them, but I was just always annoyed. You know, you know, if you don't drink and you're around drunk people, they're quite annoying. <laughs> so eventually I just thought, now I don't like it. Bars are noisy and smoky and bleh. just don't like it. All right. True happiness lies inside us, not a use of drugs or other substances. People who do that, I think, are having psychic problems. Yes, they try to imitate a hero. It only exists in their mind. In reality, they can't, so they use drugs to, and to make them dare to get that hero out. In fact, the change of drugs are temporary for a short time. It puts us in worse situation, being a slave, not helpful at all. Yeah, the typical recreational use of drugs, exactly that. Well, this is depressing. Zika Souza says, Challenges to deal with drugs in my school. Do you have any advice? The number of students addicted is increasing so fast. That's a hard one. You know, I'll be honest with you. I uh, I don't like working with drug addicts. <laughs> uh, in my before I was a teacher, I was a social worker, and uh, with that job, I often worked with drug addicts, trying to help them. And uh, I really hated it because drug addicts are lying bastards. <laughs> <laughs> they just lie, lie, lie. You can't trust anything they say. They they have no self-discipline. Um, 
the truth is you can't do much. Once they're addicted, it's too late for most of them. So what you have to do is get them before they're addicted. And what do you do? You've got to give... You don't just say, don't do drugs, just say no. That doesn't work with young people. It doesn't work with most people because that's just negative. There's nothing good at what you're not giving them anything positive. You have to give them a different vision of life that is more powerful, that is more interesting, that is more meaningful. You know, like, so I'll give you just a small example. So if, like, say you've got students and you're teaching them about how to be entrepreneurs and how to start businesses, get them to start little tiny businesses, maybe online, teach them about investing. The ones who are interested in money and, and, and freedom and creativity, they'll get excited. And now they don't need drugs because now they have something much more powerful to focus on. They have a life goals and big dreams. So uh, they don't want to just sit around doing drugs because they got other big things to do. Um, you'll find that most athletes, there are some exceptions, of course, but most serious athletes, when they really love doing some sport, well, it doesn't matter, soccer, baseball, it doesn't matter, jujitsu, and they're trying to be a top performer and do their best, most of those guys are not going to become drug addicts. They might party sometimes, yes, but... They, they realize, well, if I do this, I can't drink all the time. I can't smoke all the time because it will hurt my sport. It will hurt my performance. So most of them have, they develop that discipline. Um, you know, religious practice, traditional religious practice is another good one. Very powerful. Um, helping others, finding some way of contributing, some way of contributing. Now, it might be through a business. It might be in some other way. But they, basically, you've got, they need to find a deeper meaning and purpose to their life. When people have a purpose, when they feel a powerful purpose in their life, not just, an in, not just small goals, but something really big and meaningful to them, to them, well, then the attraction of these little pleasures is much less. So that's my advice. What kind of drugs? Medicine is a drugs. We're talking about recreational drugs, Raphael. And quite honestly, most medicine uh, kind of sucks too. <laughs> Be very careful. A lot of that stuff's garbage. All right, Vladislav's got a big comment here. Let's see. Okay, Vladislav says I'm yesterday I met with a school friend he told me I needed some of the expensive stuff to look cool uh he told me my cell phone was terrible and old I bought it less than two years ago I needed a new iPhone which is expensive my current phone is still quite fine it works properly has enough functions I need he showed me his phone photos are nice just reading this already we're it's just half can you see how shallow that is can you see how ridiculous his friend sounds? I mean, to me, his friend sounds ridiculous, like a like a weak person who is who thinks that to be important, he has to have the newest iPhone. Can you see what a what a slave he is to, to Apple? Just programmed what every year he has to get the new version of the iPhone. Look, I've seen these new versions. There's nothing different. They make little tiny uh, upgrades, but the basic function of the iPhone is the same as it was when I bought one years and years and years, like the first one of the first iPhones. I think I bought the iPhone 2. It's really no different now. The cameras are a little nicer, but the basic functions are still the same. Um, so it's, it just sound, his friend sounds so shallow and sad, actually. But we don't need photos with small details. We'll continue with um, Vladislav. Yeah, no, exactly. If you're a professional photographer, get a real camera. Otherwise, it doesn't matter. He also told me I needed a new nice bag, new clothes. He tells girls that guys like nice stuff. Oh, that girls like guys with nice stuff. Your, your friend's also an idiot when it, he knows nothing about women. <laughs> no, they don't. They don't care about that stuff. Not really. That, that, that's, that's bullshit. But I guess most girls are blue-pilled and many want money. Well, yeah, some want money, but I'll tell you what they want is strength and confidence. Those are the guys they're attracted to. 
That's why they're attracted to bad boys. It's not the badness so much they're attracted to. It's the, the strength and the confidence. That's why, you know, this is bullshit. This idea that girls are just attracted to money is bullshit. Now, at a later age, some of them are looking, for, some do look for money and they're shallow and they're not virtuous. But, um, but the truth is you can see so many examples of very attractive women with poor guys. And guys, you think they're losers. Why is she with him? He's such a loser. He has no job. He has no nice clothes, nothing. He's a loser, but what? But he's a bad boy. He's strong. He's confident, like super confident, even arrogant. So no, they're attracted to strength and uh, confidence. The money is secondary. Unlike most other guys, I don't want a very beautiful girl. Often they're spoiled. Good, yeah, good point. I don't want a girl who's so, so looking, but smart, intelligence, red-pilled, who does not trust the propaganda of school and media. You are very wise, Vladislav. You are wise for a young man. You have, you're much deeper and uh, more th intelligent, I think, than most your age. You're going to do well. Keep going. Yes, like Christy says, I agree. Self-discipline, reading our Holy Bible, Quran, etc. Every day will give us strength to face the brave new world. Yes, indeed, Christy, I agree. Yeah, like Hoda Hoda says, good point about Bernard. Bernard does not feel happy when he takes the drug, but he wants to act like them. He has the belief of high trust of others. And without deep thinking in this chapter. Yeah, that's right. Bernard's not thinking deeply yet. He just wants to be accepted by everyone, right? This social acceptance is another way of mind control, right? That's actually a good point, Hona, because Bernard's still under control, but the drugs are not controlling him. The other pleasures don't control him. They don't affect him. The uh, programming, he's different. That didn't affect him. So what is controlling Bernard still? The one thing still controlling him is this desire to fit in, the desire to be the same as everyone else, the desire to be accepted and liked by everyone. It's kind of like the, in some ways you could think of it, so it, Huxley's kind of showing us this is the final way of mind control, the final means, the final method, that even if the drugs don't work, even the media programming doesn't work. Nothing else is working for Bernard. Except one last thing is working. Social control. Other people's opinions. Well, he's too worried. In fact, he's super worried about what other people think. He's super worried about being different. And so he's still under control. So far. So far. For now. Do you think authorities and governments are intentionally not fighting hard against drugs? Oh, absolutely. They could stop drugs any time they want. Look, in the United States, the CIA, I mean, this is not conspiracy theory. This is fact with evidence and, uh, you know, it's documented. The CIA is run, helps to run the drug trade. They work with the drug cartels. They work with the uh, drug lords in Afghanistan and down in South America and all over. They use it to make money and do their little secret operations. So the governments are part of it. All right, I'm going to jump down a little bit. Well, this is a sad question, but exactly. Why fathers and older wise people don't give advice to young people to prevent this? Because they're blue-pilled too. My parents are super blue-pilled. I can't, it's very difficult for me to, um, like, teach this stuff to my parents. They're so blue-pilled, you know. I, I do a little bit. I talk about some of these things, some, but in many ways, our parents' generation, my parents' generation, were the first TV generation, right? They were raised in the 50s, and they were the first generation in America 
to grow up watching TV. And in many ways, they are the most blue-pilled <laughs> generation in America. They, I don't know why, like they just can't wake up. Like I see many more young people wake up. Uh, many more. I know a lot of young people are totally blue-pilled. Of course, most are. But in general, I see it's more, the red pill is more like my generation and younger. Okay? It's because of the internet. Because this is, this is one of the good things about the internet, that it can give us alternative information. If you look, you have to look for it. But uh, the older generation sometimes, not all, because we have people here who are in their 70s who are quite red-pilled, okay? But just overall, right? The point is that they're also blue-pilled. So you got to do it yourself. My, my parents are still blue-pilled, so they couldn't do it for me. I have to do it myself, and you do too. Uh, Kang Kang says, again, I have got the purpose in life. Uh, should I share it with others or not? I'm scared others will steal my idea. Uh, no, okay, share it. Talk about it. No, no one's going to steal. Look, um, don't be, I, if I, 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 maybe you have, if, if to, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> maybe you're talking about business, like a business idea. But here's the truth. Look, in business, it's not the idea that's important. It's a little important, but not really. It's, it's doing it. It's the action. It's how you do it, okay? Like, what do I do? I, anybody can steal my idea, you know? Like, teach, I teach English. I use stories. Uh, sometimes I teach with uh, movies. Um, I mean, none of these, these are all open. <laughs> I have a website. I mean, all of these are obvious, and anybody can copy me, and indeed, some many people have copied me over the years. I was one of the first online teachers uh on youtube and now there are many you know hundreds of them and many of them uh some of them have copied uh things i do i notice when i do something new and different that often you know a few months later some of these people try to copy me and do the same thing but the point is doesn't matter doesn't matter because uh you know you guys listen to me because who i am and uh, how I teach. It's not just what I do. Yeah, anybody else can teach using movies. Anybody else can do a book club. But will they do it the same way I do it? No, because they're not me. And so it's the same for you, Kong Kong. Y whatever business idea you might have, it's probably not completely new, okay? Probably other people have had a similar idea. There may or probably will be others who already are doing a business like that but you you don't have to be completely totally you know alone it's okay competition you're going to have competition it's okay what will give you a successful business or a project or idea is you do it in your own way that's very special to you and you do it in a way that's honest and good and true and then you will attract people you will attract people you don't need everybody. You don't need to be a billionaire. You don't need millions of people. You just need a few thousand. A few thousand people who love you and what you do and how you do it because you do it well and you're a good person. That's enough. That's all you need. So don't worry about other people stealing your idea. You know, I got people pirate my stuff, all kinds of stuff like this. It happens. But, you know, people don't value that. If they're copying me, it means they're doing a bad job. Nobody can copy me. And do this and do better than me because they're not me no one can be better at me than me right right no one can be better you than you if they try to copy you it will always be less good because they're not being true they're not being themselves so don't worry about it too much yeah like alexi says the phone has to serve your purpose in terms of increasing your knowledge in a reasonable way. I have no games on my phone, like my acquaintances. I don't, because I don't, because it's wasting time. Most girls want to have a successful man. You know how to survive in this tough world. They don't care what the phone you have. Maybe some girls under 20 years old. Yeah, good point, Alexi. Maybe the teenage girls. <laughs> They'll take a look at your phone, but it's foolish minority. You don't need to pay attention to them. Well said, Alexi. All of those things, I agree. And, you know, if you want to think about technology... Because, of course, we all realize we're using technology right now, right? You're probably, some of you are using your phones to watch this. 
But just think of it like food, okay? It's like food. Now, we know if I look at America that there's an epidemic, right? There's a horrible crisis of fat, unhealthy people and junk food. They're food addicts. They eat garbage. They're fat. They're sick. They're unhealthy. It's the majority. It's like 60% or more. If you just talk about unhealthy, it's probably 70 or 80% or more in America. So does this mean all food is bad? Of course not. We have to eat. Of course not. We must eat. <laughs> okay? So what's the difference? It's about having discipline and control. You are the master. You choose to eat and you eat healthy food and you eat. You control the amount of food you eat so that the food gives you health and energy, not sickness and fatness. Right? What's the difference? It's your discipline and your intelligence, both. You're using the food intelligently with strong discipline, and therefore the food will make you healthier and stronger. But for all those others, they're, drink, they're drinking Cokes, they're eating sugar, they're eating garbage all the time, they're eating huge amounts, they don't fast. Well, then they destroy their health. So, again, the same thing with the technology and the phones, right? Uh, you can use the phone. You can listen to educational podcasts. You can learn amazing things. Like, for example, the fasting. You know, I learned so much about this fasting. I learned it from Cole Robinson on YouTube. He's, I, that guy's YouTube channel changed my life. That's positive. It's wonderful. Increased my uh, health. Increased my such a big difference now with the control I have over my eating and food and my discipline um, because of a YouTube channel. So, hey, that's wonderful, right? But I could also watch, just spend hours and hours watching nonsense and distracting myself and just playing on social media, right? So, again, it's how you use it. So with your phone, with your computers, whatever, is to have that same kind of discipline just like you have with food, just like with food, it's the same idea. You don't have to live in the in a mountain <laughs> with no technology, but it's having that intelligence and discipline with your technology, with your food, with sex, with any kind of pleasure, with alcohol. Some of you don't drink. I don't really drink, but, um, you know, I don't criticize people who just who have the same discipline and control. They drink a little wine or something. Okay, it's the intelligence and the self-discipline that makes the difference of, of the outcome. Yeah, like Motion quotes Acharya Acharya said, technology is a double-edged sword, right? There's that nice idiom again, double-edged sword. It can cut one way, meaning it benefits it can cut the other way, meaning it hurts you. So you have to be very careful with it. It's, it's powerful. And so we have to be careful with it. Food can be powerful, especially now. We have so much, and so much food now is junk and unnatural. So again, it can be powerful. It can be powerful if you eat well and make your health much better. It can also be powerful and make your life miserable and unhappy. So we have to be careful with these things. Yeah, so Ibrahim Ali again. Now, this is about social pressure. I spoke to someone on Skype a few months ago. He asked me, do you have a girlfriend? I replied, no, I don't. He tried to criticize me. He said, come on. Why are you different? You're strange. You're young. You should enjoy life. I said to him, now I'm focusing on developing my skills, my English, computer skills, working a full-time job to learn more about my field. I want to be financially free. Then I'll find a good girl to marry and build a family. Of course, he continued to criticize me. Yeah, well, he, you're... This guy was an idiot. You're, you, you are doing very well, Abraham, and you've got a great plan. Keep going. But see, you know, these idiots that are addicted, I'll tell you this too from my old social work days working with drug addicts. They, um, they know they're weak, you know, deep inside. They won't, they won't be honest about it, but they know it, okay? They know something's missing in their life. So when they meet someone like you who is disciplined, who has this deeper happiness, who is being virtuous, they will criticize you and attack you. Why? Because just your life, just your example makes them feel their unhappiness more. It makes them notice 
right? It's the social pressure. And if you resist the social pressure, if you are strong enough to be different and live a better life, then it makes them realize that they, that, oh, oh, why can't I do it? It makes them realize their weakness. This is kind of emotionally, right? Not Most of them don't think very deeply about it, but emotionally. And so this is why they will attack and criticize, right? They're trying to use social pressure. They're trying to use social pressure to make you be the same as them, make the same stupid choices. That's why they do it. That's why they criticize. That's why they laugh at you. That's why they will pressure you, all of these things. It's just like, you know, I believe me. Oh, God, because I don't drink alcohol so many times when I was young. Like I said, I'd go out with friends or with people like at a party or a bar. And it's like that it would it would upset the people. It would upset them that I was not drinking. They would constantly be trying to, pre why don't you drink? Come on, man. Just have one. Oh, why not? Uh, pressure, pressure, pressure. And, and they were emotionally upset. They were upset that I was not drinking. Why? I was doing nothing. I didn't criticize them. I didn't really care if they wanted to drink. I didn't care. But just by me being different, by me not following this pressure, it like somehow made them upset and unhappy. So don't be surprised. This is not just with drugs and alcohol. It's true for any area of life. So a good way to have a happier life is to learn how to fight this pressure like Abraham did and is doing and to just ignore it or laugh at, laugh at them. Say, I don't need that. I don't care. Like I would just say, well, I don't like it. I'm not going to drink it. I don't like it. It tastes, it tastes terrible. I don't want it. Yeah, like Zibzek is also uh, pointing out the powerful part of technology. And again, right, the internet has helped us get more red pilled. So we have to. We, I do appreciate that. It, it has its good side too, right? Technology gives us an opportunity to share ideas. Exactly. Global changes need global commitment to cope with them. Right. We're waking up around the world. We're all meeting each other. We are realizing, oh, brave new world. It's it's the same in my country. Right? I describe this, and I'm describing what's happening in America. But then you say, well, that's happening in Iran. That's happening in Poland. That's happening in Italy. It's the same in Brazil. And we all wake up and realize, ah, it's a globalist plan. It's the whole world that this is happening to. We all share this same fight, and we can share our ideas together to fight back and to wake up. Ah, Lisa. One of the goals with drugs is to develop an addiction. Yes, for sure. Nowadays, some drugs do not only cause changes in mood and state of consciousness, they erase memory and eliminate free will. Yeah, there's some dangerous ones out there, guys. Whoever gets in this state can be perfectly controlled by others. Yes, and that's what they're describing with Soma. It's like the perfect control drug in the, in the book. But you're right, they are working on these things, for sure. For sure. Yeah, like Vladislav points out, my dad said, my dad tells people who smoke, tells me people who smoke are jealous about people who don't. Smokers are addicted and can't quit. That's why they're jealous. That's why they try to pressure. Come on, we all smoke. You should too. Are you not a man? Just try. You'll see the amazingness of smoking. Right? Exactly. And it's, it's used for all these things. All these things. All right, a couple more and then I got to go. No, yeah, it's getting, getting getting close to time. Uh, Alexi again with a nice comment. Everything in the world has a point. Some people using drugs to sell them, to make more money. Some people just consume them. The phone you can use either just to play or listen to a podcast seven hours per day. Everything goes from our head and our action. You can implement it in real life. Reading and acting is a key for any doors that seem for your lo for you locked. Yeah, that's right. And this is, you know, it's certainly uh, like a Buddhist, very Buddhist idea that 
it's the mind is the key. It's your mindset. It's it's it starts with your intention, your mind, your discipline, all of this. That's what decides these things eventually. And that's why they want to use mind control so badly and why the mind control is more powerful than physical control. You know, physical control, they grab you and throw you in jail. Yes, they do that. But it's less common, especially in the West, in Brave New World, in the globalist system, which is controlling most of the world now. Um, they're far more focused on the mind control because they realize, they realized it's much more powerful. And so to be free, we have to free our minds first. Okay, that's kind of a related question. Ibrahim Sahib says, can you give me advice how to avoid stress in life? Well, you don't want to avoid all stress. I understand stress is a major cause of sickness. However, as indeed in today's world, we're controlled by things we have nothing to do instead of focusing on proving something we have. You just answered your question at the end. You have to focus on what you can control. We learned this in uh, this, um, this guy's name, Stephen Covey's book, um, The Seven Habits, that you reduce stress, uh, unnecessary stress, by focusing on the things in your life you actually can influence. Right? If you focus on things, you have zero control. For example, the news. If you just watch CNN and the BBC and then you get upset about all the bad stuff happening everywhere in the world, you'll start to feel really stressed. Why? You have no control over that. You have no control if an earthquake hits someplace. You have no control about uh, the, some war in another part of the world. You have zero control about that. And if you focus your life and your energy and your time on those things, you will feel powerless and stressed out. What you need to do is focus on your life mostly, on what you can control or influence. Like you said, improving the things you have power over. That starts, let's say, with your physical body. That's a good one to start with. I always recommend that one as the first step. Start with your health and your fitness because you have a lot of control over that. How you eat, fasting, including fasting, and the kinds of foods you eat, and then what kind of exercise you do, what kind of training you do and build your body to be as strong and healthy as possible. That gives you uh, a great challenge and you will see benefits. You know, after a week, two weeks, three weeks, several months, you get stronger, you feel better. This gives you a feeling of power. If you're a runner, then you run longer. If you're lifting weights, you lift harder weights. You know, all of these things are great and also just burns off a lot of stress too. So physical body. Next, your mental your mental health, right? You're you, affecting your mind, reading the old books, studying the old books, the old stories, religious books, spiritual books, philosophical books, classic literature, just stories, all these great old books that have these amazing, great, deep ideas. You'll start to think more deeply. This also reduces stress, gives you, again, more meaning and power and intelligence. What you're doing now, you're learning English. So listen to my podcast, listen to the lessons. Uh, keep learning and learning and learning and focusing on improving your English constantly. You're going each month and each year, you're, you'll get better and better and better. This again reduces your stress. You feel more and more power in your own life. All that's just you. All those things, that's only you focusing on yourself that will reduce stress and give you more happiness and power in your life, confidence. Then, of course, you can also focus on uh, the, the closest people in your life, not people you don't know because you have no power there, but you know your social life, your, your family. If you're married, then, of course, your wife and husband or wife or husband, kids, that would be the most important, your own parents, your brothers, your sisters, uncles, aunts, cousins, grandparents. Focus on making better relationships with them. What can you do to help them? Uh, could you talk to them more? Could you write them a letter? Write them an email? Call them on the phone each every week? Do nice things for them. Listen to them when they have problems. Make those relationships stronger. That will reduce your stress and make your life better. Again, you have influence. You can do these things. Same thing with friendships. Make First, focus on friends you already have. Make those friendships better and stronger in the same way. And then maybe you might decide to go out and be more social and meet more people and have more friendships. So all of these things. Financially, look at your financial life. 
Are you happy with your job? Do you like what you do? If yes, great. If no, well, focus on that. You have power over that. You can control that. Do you need to change jobs? Do you need a totally different career? Do you need to learn new skills? Do you want to start your own business? Do you want to be a freelancer? Take action in those areas. You'll have less stress, feel more power. See, you have power there. In all these areas, you have influence and control and real power in your life. And that gives you a feeling of confidence and also relaxation and happiness and purpose and meaning. And the, all these things will destroy most of that bad stress. And of course, the other thing is stop focusing on all the other stuff so much. So that's my advice. <laughs> Din says, guess what? I'm addicted to effortless English. There are good addictions, right? I'm kind of addicted to exercise. I think it's a good addiction. And that just means that we, uh, those good addictions, what's the difference? The bad addictions, usually it's short-term pleasure. Short-term pleasure, long-term pain. The, uh, we probably should not use the same word addiction, but let's just say these, uh, these good things that we become, uh, that we are addicted to or that we love are usually the opposite. Usually they're short term, like in the beginning, they're, they feel very tough and difficult, but then they give us a long term pleasure. So to be, maybe we could call it dedication, to be dedicated to your family. Short term, it can be difficult. If you have children, it's difficult but long-term great happiness. Uh, physical exercise. Okay, when you first start exercising, yeah, it's kind of pain, you feel tired, your muscles are sore, but long-term you feel great. Hopefully effortless English. Maybe when you first tried it, it seemed, oh, this is different, it's hard when you're trying to learn English, but then as you get better, long-term happiness. So that's a big, big way to, to know. Is it something that's uh, beneficial? Is to look at it. Long term, look at the effects long term, not just right now, but long term. And things that create greater happiness, greater goodness, greater truth, greater beauty, long term, those are the good ones. Focus on those. Oh, Fernando with an English question. When we wake up, we eat breakfast. This word comes from fasting, right? Yes, it means break your fast. That's what breakfast means in English, your first meal, because traditionally, right, you, uh, you go to sleep. You don't eat when you're sleeping, so you're kind of fasting for maybe eight hours. And then when you first wake up and then you eat your first meal for the day, you're breaking that fast, breakfast. That's right. That's exactly what that word means. All right, we'll go with two more. This has been a pretty long one, so I've got to get going now. Yeah, well, like Alexi, I can relate. My mom's going to buy a new TV. She doesn't want to listen that it's evil. She's stubborn. The old TV brainwashed my mom's brain so much, she doesn't want to listen to her own son. I dread I won't withstand the to burn this new screen device or at least bring back using a guarantee period. I know, man, it's hard. That that generation really was brainwashed. My my, you just gotta kind of, I don't know. I kind of just try to accept them as they are and understand the limits. Um, because yeah, a lot of them just cannot wake up. They're sad. <laughs> yeah, like Motion says, we were addicted to bad things because we were blue pilled. Now we're addicted to E E effortless English because we have been red pilled. All right, guys, one more, and then we are done for today's book club. All right, let's find one more. All right, I'll, the, I'll give Fernando the last comment. It's a success story. Oh, so we find it again. Here we go. Fernando Tomimatsu says, my first book club was The Alchemist. 
compared to now, my English is incredibly a high level because now I understand you 100%. Thanks again. So he's improved a lot since since The Alchemist. That's great. Wonderful. That's why we're doing this. Um, uh, you can, of course, learn and work on your listening and learn while you listen to my videos and my shows. You can use my lessons, which are going to help even more. And uh, and also read the books. You know, we're, that's I'm trying to encourage you to read books and then now also movies starting tomorrow. Remember, tomorrow we'll be on Twitch. We'll be on Twitch TV tomorrow because of all the crazy YouTube stuff. Um, I might look into streaming on my own website. I'm trying to find some solutions for that and not even use Twitch. Just do it all on my own website and uh, then we don't have to worry at all. So anyway, I, I just got to find some. There's some, There's. it's maybe possible. I need more research. All right. Meanwhile, by the way, uh, quickly, just follow me on Gab. Gab.com doing some cool things now. They made a big change this week, which uh, it's it's huge, actually. It's huge. You may not realize it, but it's a gigantic positive move for Gab for free speech uh, with some great opportunities and potential in the future, maybe in a year or so. Uh, I'll talk more about it again, but you absolutely should follow me on Gab because I will. I'm already. I'm getting more and more and more active on Gab, and less and less active on uh, Facebook and Twitter. And in the future, I may have my own Gab. This is one of the cool things with their new system. It's possible to create your own. Like I could create the, an effortless English Gab, and it would just be for effortless English members and fans like you, anyone who loves effortless English, and. Uh, you could join our, like our private or semi-private, let's say, semi-private Gab, and it would be our own, right? So not on the main Gab site. So we don't have to worry about all those trolls and everything. Just be ours completely. We have our own rules, which would be the code. And uh, But you could still follow people. The cool thing is it would be connected to the main Gab. So if you have other people there that you follow or want to follow, you could still follow them because the two sites would connect to each other, but we would have our own. It'll be our own community, but it's also connected to all the other ones. So that's, that's the potential in the future, which is very cool because then we can have our own code. We have our own Effortless English family. So anyone who likes my show or the podcast or is a member, a VIP member, or has my lessons or anybody just interested in learning English could join our own little gab that's ours. That's cool. So for now, though, follow me on the main gab because it's the only one right now, but this is possibly coming in the future. So follow me on gab.com, AJ Hogue, AJ Hogue. Follow me there, A-J-H-O-G-E. And that's it tomorrow, tomorrow, The Matrix. We begin our movie club tomorrow, The Matrix, part one of The Matrix. So much fun. And not just movie club, but movie lessons. I'm actually going to use the movie technique for one scene tomorrow and every week I'll use it for I'll pick a scene that that has some talking in it <laughs> and uh not action we'll skip the action parts but uh that has talking in it and then I'll play it and I'll teach you the idioms I'll teach you the slang uh maybe some pronunciation uh, and of course any vocabulary that I think you might uh need to learn and we'll review that and you can learn English using these movies I'm not going to show the whole thing we're going to follow copyright law of course, and just do fair use and use just little sections for education purposes. Uh, and then to watch the whole movie, you'll need to get it yourself. Buy it yourself. Find a DVD of The Matrix and watch the whole thing yourself. But then uh, with the lessons. Now, here's the thing about the lessons, the movie club lessons. Live will be free. The live, If you can catch the live stream, which will be on Twitch tomorrow, then uh, that part will be free. Good for you. You can enjoy live and it's free. And that's my way to serve all, everybody. And uh, especially people who don't have money or the countries has sanctions or these kind of problems. The recording, however, I will, the recordings will not be free. The recordings will go, number one, VIP members. All VIP members, you will get the recordings of the movie lessons. They're going to be added to the VIP um, it'll be a separate in, in the, in our, in the courses site, it'll be a separate section, but you'll see it. It's not there yet. 
I, I need a couple months. My developers, my designers are working on the business course right now, getting it finished. So when they're done with that, then I'll have them work on this movie section. And all VIP members, you're going to get the recordings of the movie lessons. Thumbs up for you. Good for you. Finally, in uh, a little more in the future, a little longer from now, I'm going to make some kind of basic membership, supporting membership. I don't know the name of it, but uh, a cheaper membership, like maybe $10 a month, 10 to 12, 15. I don't know. It depends on how much I have to spend to create this. Um, but, but anyway, I'm going to create some kind of uh, basic membership just for the movie lessons. It'll just be for the movie club, maybe some other extras also. So kind of like a lower cost membership for some of you who have less money but you still want to get, you know, just the movie stuff or just some of the those basic ones. That cheaper membership also will be good for those of you who just want to donate to Effortless English, just support the show so I can continue to upgrade, uh, so we can become more independent, not depend on YouTube so much, not depend on Google and Twitter and Facebook. Um, so that's another way, It'd be a way of donating. You could just get that basic membership. Or you could try the basic membership and then later upgrade to VIP. So that's coming long term. But short term, immediately, VIP members, you will get the recordings. And immediately tomorrow, free for everyone when you join live. Join live. So at the same time, around 8 p.m. Japan time on Twitch TV tomorrow. See you there for our movie club starting the movie The Matrix. Take the red pill, Neo. All right, join my VIP program. You'll get those movie club recorded lessons now and in the future too. And you'll just speak English fluently and powerfully because you also get those great VIP lessons, new ones every month. At EffortlessEnglishClub.com, join now, commit now, commit, don't quit, at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. See you tomorrow.